Uh, first of all, I'm honored and humbled to be here in an organization that has so many uh, people that I've followed in their footsteps who've been so successful <laughs> or not in the region. But um, as an Arabist, I have to say when I start talking about Iraq, that Iraq was a reason that Arabists fell out of favor. Ar Arabists are in, in favor now, but we never know what uh, Iraq may do to our, our futures. So I, I stand here humble by that, uh, by that prospect. Um, it, it is an honor to talk about Iraq. Um, I'm going to try and be brief to allow questions and talk about what the administration is focused on now. Um, when I left Baghdad in uh, July, I said I would keep to the mantra that uh, things are changing in Iraq in a way that they haven't changed in any of the countries that I've had the pleasure of serving uh, sometimes twice. Um, after three months out of uh, Iraq, there are changes going on every day that are significant. And for any expert to keep track of what's going on in Iraq, it, it's necessary to keep in touch with what's going on in the ground. That, of course, leads to the question, Iraq uh, 2020. Um, this, can, this is a very difficult discussion. But let me just um, frame what the administration is focused on and what we're working on. Really, there are two transitions that we're looking at now that we think will lay the, front, the groundwork for our relationship as we go ahead past 2012 and towards 2020. The first is the major transition from a military security um, driven relationship to a civilian traditional diplomatic partnership. And that's very important and I'll talk about some of the elements there. The second is the transition that's going on with, within Iraq and the transition from uh, a government that has not ha that, that had sectarian conflict in 2000, 2000, uh, 2006, 2007, had violence, an economy that was in shambles, to where we are now and what the prospects we, we see. So I'm talking about two transitions. Let me start with the military to civilian transition. Um, we now currently have about 116,000 troops in Iraq. We're going to go down to 50,000 by August of 2010 per the president's um, uh, plan. This is the withdrawal timetable. They will have a role after uh, August of 2010, but that will be a non-combat role. But they'll still be present, and they'll still have some influence. However, what we're building now is a civilian relationship that isn't so security driven. We have something called the Strategic Framework Agreement, which was signed with much less fanfare at the same time as the security agreement, the, the equivalent of a SOFA, what the Iraqis call the withdrawal agreement. Um, the Strategic Framework Agreement provides the basis for traditional modes of di diplomacy and traditional interaction with the government of Iraq in some sort of a partnership. And we have these relations uh, around the world that vary from once a year partnerships to once every month partnerships. So when we look at the Strategic Framework Agreement, which was launched at the end of the last administration and then recertified by Hillary Clinton with Prime Minister Maliki in July, we see a framework that actually has a lot of support in Iraq. I would argue that most Iraqis, except for some of the extremist trends, believe that Iraq should have a partnership with the United States. And the Strategic Framework Agreement possesses the, uh, the, the factors necessary for that. It includes the economic, economic cooperation, it includes cooperation in assistance, education, health, culture, and it provides a basis where we can bring to bear some of the traditional tools of diplomacy using agencies that have been present in Iraq for six years, but were present under a military umbrella. This is very important for the U.S. military because they view as the U.S. military presence goes down that there should be an increase in the U.S. civilian presence. I was the political military affairs uh, in, uh, counselor in Baghdad and my tried and, and true speech was how few foreign service officers there were and how there wasn't going to be a new surge in Iraq of civilians that would, that would equal the 116,000 that they have now. We are, however, going to um, go to some traditional um, tried and true methods through AID, through police training, which will switch from a military program to a civilian program, to some of the tr traditional educational and cultural partnerships, where we'll have a better opportunity of working with the Iraqis in partnership, not under the shadow or not under the, 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 the overall security concerns. Um, this is a, uh, um, an important transition, and it will take time. We're not going to be able to go straight from where we are today to some sort of traditional partnership overnight. 
This is why the 2012 date is important, because we have a time to set up these, um, uh, these institutions and to support Iraqi institutions as we go forward. Our plan is to continue things that are sort of an aberration for diplomats. We have these things called provincial reconstruction teams. Even though we're out of the business of reconstruction, we're going to keep our provincial presence around Iraq into 2012, and that's very important. Um, the cost of these is enormous, and we're going to have to, and it shows our commitment to be remaining engaged in Iraq that will keep these, this presence around Iraq. We're also going to coordinate very closely with the advise and assist brigades that Ambassador Dobbins referred to. What will these um, advise and assist brigades do if they're not doing uh, combat and training? They're going to be involved in the, and we believe, and we're working with the military very closely, in supporting these prevent, the, the provincial diplomatic presence, supporting UNAMI, supporting the EU, supporting NGOs that need security support, that need logistic support. This is a, and a very important part of our transition. Um, the other aspects of the transition is to get the agencies that were there, such as agriculture and commerce, to move out from under the military funding umbrella, which is a wonderful umbrella to be in, given how many billions of dollars that are, that are available there. We want tradi a traditional commerce office, a traditional agriculture under, office under the Foreign Agricultural Service. We want DOJ and rule of law present as they are in many other embassies and with many other countries around the world. And we have a basis to establish that in the platform that we've um, built in Baghdad and the platforms that we will have around the provinces in Iraq. Uh, 